Don't touch that dial. This is WEAF, NBC in New York. It's 4.30 p.m. Eastern Wartime. Betty, can't we go pretty soon? I'm getting a little tired of waiting. Just a couple more minutes, Jack. Gee, if I'd known it would take this long, I'd have had Rochester hitch up Leona and come after me. <laughs> navigator or pilot, this is the time to make your dreams come true. With confidence in our armed forces, with the unbounding determination of our people, we will gain the inevitable triumph, so help us God. Ah, Mrs. Nussbaum again. Schnorrer. Yes, the happiest band in the land holds the spot on the whole Calasca roof from the heart of Times Square in New York City. Here they come. Kettle, go to them. I suppose Danny Saunders and I would have never met had it not been for America's entry into World War II and the desire of American Jews to show the world that we were as physically fit as any other American. We would prove this by playing tough games of neighborhood baseball. But even though Danny and his team lived within five blocks of us, it might as well have been 5,000 miles, for Danny was a member of a very orthodox group of Jews called Hasidim. They wore their hair and clothes the same way their ancestors did hundreds of years ago in Eastern Europe. You could see them on Saturday, Shabbos. They would hurry off to their small synagogues to pray and to study the holy books, the Torah and the Talmud. Play? Just about ready. We're ready to. Good. They were a strange group. I didn't know very much about them. They would always keep to themselves. And that was fine with me. Stick to praying. Strike three, you're out! Yeah, one well, more just like that, Danny. No matter. Easy out, easy out. Come out, Danny, come on. No batter, no batter. Walter, Goldberg, back up. Come on, back up. That's right. Reuben, move back. That's Danny Saunders. He can hit. All right, Davey, come on. Let's get him, Dave. Whip it in there, Davey! Whip it in! Get in there, Davey. There you go. Jay Fitz second. That was a nice shot. Can we sit like that to the pitcher? You always this friendly? No batter, no batter. He can't hit Davey. Get it. First 
Lieutenant. Uh, Malta, you take over for Davy, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Come on, Reuben. Give him the buzz bomb, Reuben. Bolt! Port on, Reuben. Port on! Come on. Ball two. Feeling. Okay. The hospital just telephoned me. They told me you were awake. I brought you a few things. I ran out of a faculty meeting. Is Maya going to be okay? Why shouldn't it be? Dr. Lockman operated on it. He's a big specialist. They operated on it? Mm hmm. What was the matter? There was a piece of glass in your eye. They took it out? Yeah, took it out. It's, it's gonna be okay now? <laughs> your eye's going to be all right. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. <coughs> I know you're not telling me something. Please tell me. I'll tell you exactly what they told me about the eye. Until the bandages are removed, we won't know whether the eye will be able to see or not. But Dr. Luckman is very optimistic. But he's not sure? No. No, he's, he's not sure. Danny Sonner's father called me twice today. And once, last night, he just wanted to know how you were, and he tells me son is very, very sorry. He's sorry that he didn't kill me. Reuven, what kind of talk is this? It wasn't an accident. He wanted to hit me. You mean he did it deliberately? It seemed deliberate. I brought your radio. Just because you're in a hospital doesn't mean you should be shut off from the world. The news reports say Rome was declared an open city. It will be ours any day now. Uh, 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 no reading. What do you mean, no reading? I can't read a newspaper? You are not allowed to read. What am I going to do about my schoolwork? That's one of the great advantages of being hit in the eye. No schoolwork. I have to get to the library. You rest. I'll see you tomorrow. Hello to you guys and gals who are giving American history something to brag about. Here's a high jumping tune dedicated to the kind of action we want to see you enjoy and mighty soon. Hello. <coughs> I'm sorry about what happened. Who let you in here? They told me I could see you. Your eye. Will it get better? I don't know yet. I'm sorry. Is that it? Huh? That's it. 
Shepard. I didn't come here to fight with you. If all you want to do is fight, I'm going to go home. Yeah? Good, go home. I came here to talk to you. I don't want to listen to you. Go home. Goodbye. I am sorry. Look, just leave. Do you understand English? Leave. Of course I understand English. See me? Who? Andy Saunders. Huh? And? And I threw him out. Why? Do you hate him that much? Well, I don't like him very much. I'm glad I'm home. I'm glad you're home too. Here was my room, just the way I'd left it. But somehow, everything seemed different. It was as if some part of me had been left back in the schoolyard next to my shattered glasses. My father had often told me that health was a gift, but I had always taken that for granted. But now, now I tried to imagine what my life would be like with only one good eye. I felt sick inside. I was scared. Mm, remember, don't strain your eyes. I won't. I got it. Are you gonna get mad at me again? May I come in? Yeah. Thank you. You were quite mean to me at the hospital. So? I'd like to talk to you about it. I'd like to explain. Are you willing to listen? I'm listening. It's like this. Whenever I do something I don't understand, I try to think it through until I understand it. And what I don't understand is, at the ball game, I wanted to jewel the head with my bat. I don't know why I want to kill you, but I want to kill you. Do you feel this way about most people? No, Malta. Just you. Thanks for the compliment. You still want to kill me? No. You are weird. I am? Yeah, you are. You look like you walked out of another century. You play baseball at Babe Ruth. You talk like you're from outer space. Thanks for the compliment. You could come in if you like. Sit down. Where'd you learn to hit like that? I practiced. I thought you people uh, only studied Talmud. I have an agreement with my father. I study my quota of Talmud every day. The rest of the time is my own. Your quota of Talmud? Four pages. Four pages? I can do one page, and I'm very good. And even then, I need my father to come help me. I have total recall. Sure. Prove it.
American Army casualties totaled 3,283 and 12,600 wounded up to midnight last night in the first 11 days of the invasion of France. The beachhead has become, quote, absolutely secure, and quote, the Germans having, quote, last night in the first That's 11 amazing. days. I can do all of Ivanhoe. Now you're trying to show off. Trying to make a good impression. You doing okay? I truly hope your eye will be all right. I'll manage. Anyway, now I can look like Errol Flynn. Who, who is he? Errol Flynn. This Robin Hood. Captain Blood. Errol Flynn. You don't know who Errol Flynn is? The movie star? Oh. I've never been to a movie. We don't go to movies. Where'd you learn to play the piano? My mother. She died. That sounds Hasidic. No, Ziggy Elman. He plays with Benny Goodman. Who? Benny, you don't know who Benny Goodman is? I don't believe... You haven't been around too much, have you? I should be going. knows what your father writes about. He doesn't particularly approve. So let him write his own articles. He would never do that. You see, my father believes that words distort what a person really feels in his heart. Your father doesn't speak with words? Actually, he doesn't talk much. At least not to me. We talk when we study Talmud, but otherwise... My father wishes everyone could speak in silence. One more thing, Ruben. 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 If you'd like, maybe I could help you with your schoolwork. Your reading. Maybe. To die to sleep, to sleep pretends to dream. I, there's the rub for in that sleep of death. What dreams may come when we have shuffled off this moral coil. Must, 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 what? Must give us pause. Must give us pause. Must give us pause, I know that. Do you know what it means? I never ask us that on finals. What do you dream about, Ruben? Dream about a lot of stuff. Do you remember any of your dreams? Yeah, sometimes. I had a very, I had a very funny dream the other night. I dreamt uh, there was this king, and he was dancing around my bed, and he was dressed up in a clown suit. Do you know the Hebrew for king? Of course, Melech. And for clown or fool? Lemeth. The word for king, Melech, begins with an M. And then an L. Whereas the word for fool, Lemeth, begins with the L and then the M. So what? In Hebrew, the word for intellect is Moch, begins with an M. And the word for heart, the seat of passion? Lev. Lev, that's correct, begins with an L. So you see, Reuven, if you put the M in front of the L, the head in front of the heart, then you're a king. But if you put the L in front of the M, the heart in front of the head, then you're a fool. You're calling me a fool? No, 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 no. But don't you see the importance that the symbols in our dreams can have? Ruven, deep inside of us, there's something. It's called the unconscious. It makes us do and feel things without us ever even being aware of it. It's filled with things that, that we're afraid to tell ourselves. 
And it is only by interpreting the symbols in our dreams that we can find out about what's really going on inside of us. Danny, where did you learn all this stuff? Um, I've been reading about it. In Hebrew class? No. In the library. I get tired just studying Talmud. I know it cold, so I've been going to the library, reading other things. It's okay with me. With you, maybe. My father, he's very specific about the things we're allowed to read. Have you told him? No. I haven't told anyone. Until now. I met this man in the library. He's been showing me books to read. Fitzgerald, Steinbeck, Hemingway. Now, now I'm concentrating on psychology. Adler, Jung, Freud. It's, it's incredible, Ruben. It's, it's exciting. I've been going to the library as often as I can without anyone finding out about it. I'll keep your secret. What are you going to do after you graduate? Go to Hirsch College. What about you? Rabbinical yeshiva. You know, Hirsch has got a rabbinical department. It's a very good one. Yes, I've heard of it. But my father would never let me go there. So you're going to become a rabbi and take your father's place? It's expected of me. My family, they've been rabbis for the past six generations. It's like a dynasty. And I'm next in line. You don't sound very happy about it. Get this room. Him? Him, he gets a 98 with one eye, yeah. Yeah, but he's had help. From whom? He's got his own personal hasid giving him lessons. Hey, Goldberg, would you just lay off? Touchy. Is this true? Yeah, that's the word. He's hanging out with a holier gang now. He's getting too good for us. Oh, see you there, brother. Buddies now. <laughs> I see them. I see them too, but I don't believe them. <laughs> See what I tell you. Oh, there he goes. Bye, Ruben. <laughs> Danny, what are you doing here? I'm looking for you. My father wants to meet you. Why? I told him we were friends. <laughs> you don't mind me telling him we were friends? No, I don't mind. Good. Well, he has to approve. He has to approve of what? Of my friends. Especially if they're outside the fold. So you'll come? Yeah, I guess. Where? To meet my father. Yeah, I'll come when? Tomorrow for Shabbos. Don't worry, Ruben. My father is a great man. You'll see when you come. Whereas the word for life. Danny told me about the founder of the Hasidic movement, who lived with poor people in Poland during the 1700s. They called him the Baal Shem Tov, the master of the good word. He had studied Kabbalah, the secret books of Jewish mysticism. He preached a popular idea that God is everywhere, that he should be worshipped with joy and singing and dancing. That to be a good Jew didn't depend on how much you knew, but on how much you felt.
small town. Your eye is healing. That's good. With God's help, it'll heal speedily. I hear you're a good student. You know Torah? Yes, sir. Do you know Talmud? Well, we shall see. We shall see. He shouted, hold on to this rope, hold tight, hold tight, because if you let go, you may lose your life. Are we too not drowning in the sea of ignorance, cruelty, death? Who is our captain? God. And what is the rope that he throws us? It is our Torah. Now it's not an easy task to study Torah. It is a task that takes all day. It is a task that takes all night. And there is a great danger. Did not the red my hair say, he who is walking by the way and studying, and he breaks off that study and he sees, he sees a field. And in that field, he sees a tree. Him does not the scriptures consider as if he had forfeited his life. Only, only through the Torah, through the Torah can you lead a full life. Only then will God, the master of the universe, only then will he hear your words. Amen. Ruben? Ruben, what did you think of my uh, little talk? I mean, was, uh, was it uh, 
Was it uh, all right? Was it good? It was very good. It was very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, was it, uh, it was it was all uh, good and uh, correct? Sir? Daniel? It wasn't Rabbi Mir who said that turning from Torah and looking on a field or a tree would be forfeiting a life. It was written in the name of Rabbi Yaakov, not Rabbi Mir. Ah. Ah. <laughs> it was Rabbi Yaakov. And is it, uh, Ruven, is it also true that a man, he should spend his whole life only studying Torah? Torah should be combined with work and good deeds. And whose words are these? S Simeon the Righteous, I think. You think you should know? I know. I know. You know? I know. I know. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's good that you know, huh? <laughs> he knows. Yeah? At least you could have warned me. I didn't know. So, what's the matter? Mama, this is Ruvain Walter. Ruvain Walter. Hello. And this Hello. is my sister Shane, though. Hello. Come on, please. He usually only asks me. Do you always go through that routine? Sure, but I don't mind it. I'm used to it. It's a kind of tradition. That's some tradition. My father's father did it to him. It's really not so bad. The bad part is waiting until he makes the mistake. After that, it's all right. Actually, it's kind of a game. I enjoy it. Some game? Huh. Aren't you scared in front of all those people? Ah. They love it. Didn't you see their faces? They're proud of us. They're proud of my father. Ruven, back in Russia, my father saved his whole community. Banded gangs of Cossacks attacked the little town he lived in. They killed everybody. They left him for dead with a bullet wound in his chest. Well, once he recovered, he announced to his people they were done with Russia. They were going to America. They all followed him just like that? <laughs> of course. They would have followed him anywhere. I don't understand that. I don't know any rabbi who has that kind of power. No, no, Reuven. My father is not just a rabbi. He's a tzaddik, a righteous man, a bridge between his followers and God. You're going to be a bridge too? Yesterday, I asked him if maybe I could go to Hirsch College instead of rabbinical yeshiva. Yeah? What did he say? He didn't say anything. I told you. My father doesn't talk to me. I'd hate that. To not have my father talk to me. Glad that uh, my son Daniel has picked you as a friend, but uh, also I happen to know that your father is a famous uh, scholar and he does scientific uh, criticism of the sacred words, so I don't know. Maybe I should worry that the son of such a man should be the friend of my Daniel. But then again, Daniel should have a friend. I mean, my, myself, I, I have I have many responsibilities. So I'm uh, uh, I'm too uh, busy to uh, to talk to him. Well, let me tell you something. Now you listen. It is not easy to be a friend. You hear? Yes, sir. Okay. So, have a good week and come pray with us again. Good luck. Good luck. Reb 
Saunders says that he doesn't like your articles very much. I'm not surprised. We come from two totally different approaches. He thinks Torah was written by God, and I think it was written by man, inspired by God. But then there's a lot of my own writing I don't like myself. Papa, what are you talking about? Your writing is it's brilliant. Thank you. But there's brilliance and there's brilliance. I'm a simple teacher doing my job, writing as well as I can. I know my limits and I accept them. But I'm no great leader like a Rip Saunders. Ah. So now you like him. I don't know him well enough to like him or not. I don't care particularly for his Hasidism, but he accomplished a lot. It's not a simple task to be a leader of people. It needs a special gift, and Reb Saunders has that gift. It's a pity he keeps his Hasidim in a separate world, and he resists modern ideas and changes. It's even more a shame that a mind like Danny's should be shut off from the world. Danny doesn't want to be shut off. He wants to go to Hirsch College. Danny! And what does his father say? He told me that his father doesn't talk to him. What do you mean? He said that his father believes in silence. You mean Danny was brought up in silence? Papa, what does that mean? I heard once in Europe something about that, but I never believed it. Must be a very, very lonely boy. Anyway, I'm glad and proud you made Danny your friend. So am I. You're studying German? What's wrong with German? Freud wrote in German. I want to read him in the original. What are you looking at me like that for? Just because Hitler speaks German doesn't mean the whole language is corrupt. You know what the word for mysterious is in German? I don't know any German. It's Geheimnisschwur. It's full of secrets. That's what the unconscious is. Geheimnisschwur. 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 Sound like spies to me. Hey, what do you say? They sound like spies to you? Loose lips sink ships. Hey, what's with the curls, honey? You're in our way. Hey, you're on our block. Hey, we like... No, no, no. We're on our own. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Sorry, Jew boy. <laughs> no, no. Dirty coat. You told me you didn't like the fight. No. Mrs. Saunders, it's all right. Uh, Levy, go get some witch hazel for your brother. Uh, um, you sit here, I'll get some wet towels. So this is what I can expect when the two of you are together? Rip Saunders, I'm sorry it wasn't our fault. You're sorry? You wear that for a while. You can see. Yeah, I can see. Baruch Hashem. Papa? Shh, 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 shh. Danny, I want you to meet my father. Papa, I want to introduce you to somebody. Papa, this is my friend, Danny Saunders. Danny, I'd like you to meet my father. told you my name. Wait a minute, what is going on here? I am very grateful to you, Mr. Martha. It was you who was suggesting books for Danny. Well, a boy comes into the library and sits down near where I usually sit. A sitting boy, and he sits a little bit in the corner so no one should recognize him. But after a while, he turns to me, apologizes for having interrupted my work, and asks me if I could recommend a book for him suggest one and two hours later he comes back and has not only read it but memorized it i was amazed of course and i suggest another one another, another, another. and here we are why didn't you tell me 
It was not for me to tell. It's another book for you. Not very easy, but uh, you might like it. It's also by Freud. Might be just the right moment. The German title is Totem and Taboo. here. Do you not want to be back? He didn't tell me. Are you still studying together? Yes. We're preparing for college. You're going to rabbinical yeshiva? No. Well, do you want to come inside? Or wait out here? I'd like to come inside. Hello, Rep. Saunders. Hello, I want you to come upstairs. I want to talk to you in this study. Yes, sir. Put the books on the desk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Take the books out of the chair. Now you'll sit in the chair. There are a lot of books in this room. Yes, sir. You think there was enough books in this room to last a lifetime? That's why I like to talk to you about something. I understand that uh, my Daniel spends several hours a day at the library. No, I had to find out about this, then, but it's too small that I shouldn't find out about it. And I understand uh, that he also spends some of this time with you. Is that true? Yes, sir. And I understand also that some of these hours he spends with your uh, father. Is that uh, also true? Yes, sir. But what I don't know is what is it? Daniel is my friend. He's your friend. He's my son. He's my most precious possession in the whole world. I mean, he takes my place afterwards. He follows me. I can't tell my Daniel what to do. This you may not understand, you know, I can't... Well, I can't ask him. But I can ask you. Ruben, look at him. It's very simple. I need your help. I don't want to lose my dad. Not my dad. Ruben's here. Good. Where is he? Upstairs in Papa's study. How long has he been there? For around 15 to 20 15. minutes. He knows all about the library. I made the some of our tea. Fresh. Sit, sit. What? What's with the long faces? But nobody's talking? Maybe I have something for you. I was saving it for a special occasion, but it looks so sad. Maybe now's best. Hmm? Here. What's this? Open, open. <laughs> it's a brief 
suitcase. Beautiful, huh? It's for your books. Thank you, Mom. It's for your books when you go to college. Hirsch College. Oh. It's from me and your father. I couldn't say Reb Saunders was very pleased about Danny's going to Hirsch, but at least he was satisfied that Danny would be able to get his rabbinical degree there. The war was still the major event on everyone's mind. The Germans had launched a big offensive in the Ardennes region, and while the Battle of the Bulge was being fought, Danny and I were studying Talmud in the morning and regular college subjects in the afternoons. I liked college. It was challenging and it was exciting. But for Danny, it was very different from what he expected. Let's get this clear about Freud. Dogmatic Freudians are not scientists. They are more like medieval magicians. What we are going to study here is what psychology should be, a science. I got my first day. Isn't that great? This calls for a little bit of a celebration, don't you think? And I feel like giving up. Maybe I made a mistake coming here. Why? What? What's wrong? Psychology class. Freud was a scientist, not just a dreamer. I can see myself spending the next four years running rats through mazes. What do these rats have to do with the human mind, hidden desires, evil impulses, the unconscious? You know, you know what you need, huh? I think you need a little healthy diversion. I think you got. I think you got to widen the horizons a little bit. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna show you something. Okay. Come on, let's go. I'm gonna take you somewhere. What? No, I have to finish my food. They should send that stuff overseas. Come on, get up. No. Would you just get up, please? What do you mean, no? I have to study. You have to study. You've done all the studying you need to do. Come on, get up. Ruin. Would you just get up? Ruin. What? 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 Don't take them. Don't take them. Would you just get? Come on. Come on. Ah, uh, it's good. Over here. Have you ever noticed how we have no pictures or paintings on the walls of our house? It's because the images detract from what's real, from what's true. I see you haven't stopped looking. That's because it's, it's beautiful.
No? How do they feel? Uh, the tight. Tight on the nose. That's no problem. I can fix that in a second. You wait here. You like this. Just like Levy likes his and just like your father likes his. You know, Ruben. Yeah? I think Levy would make a very good rabbi. Levy? A baby? Sure. Don't you think he's a little young? Oh, now try it. Better yet, huh? Oh, now, now you look like a real rabbit. I'll get you a fine case. Uh, Rebbe, Mr. Rebbe, sir, I would like to, uh, like to give your eyes a real test. What test? How would you like to see your first movie? Uncover the most horrible atrocities in the history of this devastating war, the Nazi concentration camps. General Eisenhower is visibly appalled as he inspects the incredible evidence of Nazi cruelty. The few survivors testify to the deliberate murder of thousands of prisoners. Unsuspecting European Jews were deported in cattle cars to such camps as Buchenwald. Behind these electrified fences, the death mills flourished. Here is official documentary proof of sheer mass murder. Men, women, and children of all ages were branded with serial numbers, worked like slaves, starved, tortured, and systematically slaughtered by the thousands. The Nazis deceived their victims by telling them that they were going to showers to be disinfected. But the showers were really gas chambers. This was all part of the Nazi plan for the genocide of the Jewish people. Once inside, they were exterminated. Their bodies then burned in specially constructed ovens. Camps like Buchenwald, Dachau, Bergen-Belsen, Auschwitz will be emblazoned in the history of man's inhumanity to man. All that now remains are the mounds of hair, clothes, and eyeglasses of the Jewish victims. At the moment, peers mount that the death tolls may be in the millions. Do he slay me? Yet will I trust in him? How the world delights in killing us. All our leaders, our teachers, our families, what's left, all is reduced to
bones. Ashes. We are the survivors. It's up to us to keep our people alive. We cannot wait for God. How long are you going to be gone? I don't know. Maybe two weeks. Certainly two weeks. Maybe three. Here, this is where you can reach me in Chicago. And this is the number and the address of the people organizing a Jewish homeland in Canada. They know where to reach me. Oh, Papa, have you got your shaving kit? Shaving kit? Shaving kit? No. Maybe I should take you with me as my secretary. Thank you. Will you be all right over there? Oh, I'll be fine. Mrs. Saunders is uh, supposed to be a good cook, better than you are. She can't be better than I am. Oh, she says she's better than you are, and I believe her. I'm the greatest cook in this house. Oh, that explains why I'm always hungry. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> glad you're here. Don't worry, we're going to take very good care of you. <laughs> In fact, I think we're going to fatten you up a little bit. Uh, Shadele, you know, turn it off. Mom, please, don't want me to please. And if there's anything Ruby. you want, please, don't hesitate to ask. I'm so glad you're here. I'll take your bag. Let me get the bags. Let me get the bags. Please? I can get I've got the bag. I'll have to let you go and get some uh, more hangers, okay? Mrs. Saunders, thank you very much for everything. Enjoy yourself. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Now you get it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Herschel says you can work miracles. Can you? Only God can make miracles. He says you can predict the future. I can predict the future? Yeah. All right, I'll make a prediction. I will make a prediction. I predict that if you don't concentrate, you will lose this game. That's my prediction. What are you reading? A book. I might have figured that out if I had enough time. Aren't you supposed to be helping your mother in the kitchen? Is that all you think a girl does? Cook and clean? Boy, do I pity your husband. Boy, do I pity your wife. Shane uh, come in the kitchen and help me with the vegetables, huh? 
But I'm reading. Uh, the book can wait. Uh, the food can't. Come. What a strange and wondrous household this was. I never realized how full the life of a rabbi could be. There were babies to be blessed, and boys to be bar mitzvahed, and disputes to be settled. An almost endless procession of people came in and out to get advice from Reb Saunders on everything, anything. What is this? Save it. It'll bring you good luck. You'll get married real quick. special events were the marriages, and since I was now accepted as a member of the family, I was there for all the celebrations.
having a good time? Annie, I am having a wonderful time. Good. Good Blue, you're not much older than us. He's the only one who doesn't look like he's having such a good time. Do you know how long they've been engaged? No. Six years. Six years? You mean they made up their mind six years ago? No. Their marriage was arranged. It's a Hasidic custom. It doesn't sound very romantic. Maybe not. But now my sister Shango. Shango? Yes. Her marriage contract was arranged when she was just a child. She's going to marry the son of another Rebbe. Has she met him? Once. Twice. She like him? I don't know. I never asked her. Ruben, I thought I should tell you now. I wouldn't want you to be hurt. Thanks. Come on, Sans. Come, come. In a minute. You shouldn't play with the food, eat it. Look at Ruvain. You see how he's eating? That's what you should be doing. Leave him alone, believe me. He'll eat when he gets hungry. Don't worry about that. Oh. And when the Messiah comes, there'll be no more hunger in the world, there'll be no more war, there'll be no more struggles. When the Messiah comes, he'll lead our people to the land of Israel. I thought that the Messiah was supposed to come after him. Great catastrophe. Haven't you had that? It can come any time. In fact, there's a very funny story about the, the Holy Rabbi Enoch. This man had such a problem about the Messiah you can't believe. If he heard within a block of the house a sound, a cricket should make a chirp. He thought it was the Messiah. If a stranger came in the house, this man would jump like a frightened liar. The Messiah, the Messiah, the Messiah. No sugar, not the Messiah. <laughs> well, there's some people that say that we shouldn't have to wait for the Messiah. That Palestine should become a Jewish homeland now. Some people say we should build this homeland for ourselves. And who are these people that say that they should build their new land? Who are these people? Well, it is written that the Messiah and the Messiah only will bring the Jews to the new land. Only the Messiah, when he comes, will bring them. And God will help build their new land. That's what written God, not Ben Gurion and his henchmen. No! Never! How am I supposed to know that Zionism is a contaminated idea? The men who want to set up a state of Israel are not Orthodox Jews. What difference does that make? Ruben, just don't talk about a Jewish state here anymore, okay? To my father, the idea of a Jewish state that's not religious is a violation of everything he believes. I'm glad I didn't mention it was my father who said all that. I might have been thrown out of the house. You would have been. What are you thinking? About my father. I miss him. You'll be glad to leave here, won't you? Well, you can't say I'm particularly welcome right now. You think my father's a tyrant? You 
you know, I feel sorry for him. He's trapped. You know what it's like to be trapped? I was glad when my father came home. It was a relief to get back to the world again. He was so possessed with the drive for a Jewish state that he threw himself into more work. He wrote speeches, newspaper articles, advancing the cause of a Jewish homeland. You're working too hard. I'm fine, don't worry. I worry. I think that you're driving yourself too hard. You need some rest. Rest? Our Jewish boys are risking their lives fighting in the streets for an idea, for something they believe in, I should rest. No, I kept that sum. Only a life with meaning is worthy of rest. I want to be worthy of that rest. You understand? Yes. Anyway, you don't live forever. I'm not trying to scare you. Look, between you and the doctor, I'll live another hundred years. You're scared. understand this is the only value I can see in my life right now except you so please no more words okay 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 you want this now what is it tea yeah fight Jewish diem no state of Israel without the Messiah no state of Israel without the Messiah fight the Jewish goyim that want to make a false state of Israel no state of Israel. No state of Israel. We here have a responsibility to protect the lives of the men, women, and children in Palestine who are now being threatened with Arab aggression. Millions of us have already died. Many of our relatives, fathers, friends, only a Jewish state can give meaning to these savage acts. Only a Jewish state can guarantee that it will never happen again. Sympathy. We need money, we need supplies, we need action now! Let each of us devote our work and actions to make the dream of a state a reality. Let us prove to all the world that we mean what we say when we say never again, never again, never again! Reuven, here we got a place for you. Look, they printed the whole thing in the Times as well. Really? Hey, have you heard about that group that's forming to go over and fight with the Haganah? Uh huh. Yeah, well, I decided to join them. <laughs> Some soldier you'll make, Goldberg. <laughs> Better you should join the other side. <laughs> so, Reuben, how's it feel to have a famous father? Now, you'll be famous. My association, anyway. Ah, Malter. And his mom's a goyim. You need a paper brain. Yeah, why don't you read this and get some education? I spit on your education. Worse than the Nazis. What? Worse than Hitler. He destroyed the Jewish body, but you, you'll destroy the Jewish soul. <laughs> down, all right? They got you fighting, they're gonna kick you out of the college. You all right? Yeah. Danny! I'll take care of it. Go. Look, I need to talk to you. I'm not here. Follow me. What are we doing in here? My father read your father's speech in the newspaper. Well, my father made a very powerful speech. 
Well, it was a very big success. It wasn't a success in my house. My father exploded this morning. You've been excommunicated officially. What? I'm not to see you, talk to you, listen to you, or be found within four feet of you. What are you talking, talking to you now? Might be betraying his orders. What are we going to do? I'm going to do as he says. Wait, we won't meet anymore. I won't reject my father. I won't defy my father. I won't. Just listen. I'm not your friend. Saunders could accept the relationship between Danny and us in front of his people, except when it comes to Zionism. There are some Hasidim, like the Lubavitch, who support the, the idea of a state, but definitely not Reb Saunders. Reb Saunders is a fanatic. He's medieval. Yeah. They, they arrange marriages and they arrange friends. They're complete fanatics. Well, please don't generalize. I don't like his attitude either. But in a strange way, it's a very fanaticism of men like Reb Saunders that has kept us alive for 2,000 years of exile. And if the Jews in Palestine would have one ounce of that same fanaticism, we would soon have a Jewish state. That doesn't make me feel any better. Me neither. I'm sorry. I wanted the two of you to be friends, and now I'm the cause of your separation. I'm sorry. <laughs> For the rest of that year, Danny and I ate in the same lunchroom, we attended the same classes, we even rode on the same trolley cars, and we never once said a single word to each other. The silence between the both of us was ugly. I felt completely helpless. I couldn't concentrate on my schoolwork. I tried to talk about all of this with my father, but he was so busy as the question of a Jewish state was being debated at the UN. The newspapers were filled with accounts of Arabs attacking Jewish settlements. Said for tonight, are you gonna come? Yeah. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Like my father, I wanted to help. I needed to help, I felt that I, too, had to do something.
have you been? I've been out. You know how worried I've been? I'm sorry. Sorry? It's seven o'clock in the morning. I waited for you all night. I don't have time for this room. I thought I could trust you. You can't trust me. I can't be waiting for you all night. I don't have the time for that. I don't have the energy. You know what's at stake. I expect more of you than just playing around. You think I was playing around? What else? I was doing your work. Our work! What you believe in! A friend wanted me to help ship guns to Palestine. some breakfast. Seriously thinking about it, I, I not like Rep Saunders, a rabbi for today's world. A rabbi? What a waste! I didn't say a priest, I said a rabbi. Rabbis can get married, you know. Walter, will you save me from my evil thoughts? seems to be doing fine now. Are you okay? Yeah. Can I go see him? Yeah. C21. I'll be down in a minute. Thank you.
Sit here. What do we got here? I got the mail. The mail. Okay, who's that for? This one's for you. That's for me. That's for you. That's for me. Mm, this one's for you. That's for me. This one's for Danny. This one is for Danny. Where's Columbia University? That's across the river. What's there? Psychology. Any more? You have all been called here on what is a very sad occasion for me. It is my duty to inform you that one of our former students, Sidney Goldberg, was killed at a kibbutz near Herzliya. He was shot while working in the fields. As some of you may know, he left college to help participate in the founding of a Jewish homeland. We wish to extend our condolences to his family and friends. He will be dearly missed. May his spirit return to the Lord who gave it. That is all, gentlemen. session of the United Nations. The debate has just finished on the question of the partition of Palestine. Should the proposal be passed by the member nations, it will mean the first major step in the creation of a state of Israel. We now take you to the floor of the United Nations. The voting has already begun on partition resolution number 181. It takes a two-thirds majority to pass the resolution. At this point, they are shy by three votes. Iraq against Mexico. Mexico vote for the partition plan and the establishment of a state of Israel. Sweden. Sweden abstains. Syria. Syria votes against. Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. The Union of Soviet Social Republic votes for the partition. United Kingdom. There's one more. His Majesty's government wishes to abstain. United States of America. The United States of America votes for the party. We have a state. Papa, we have a state. We have a state. Two thousand years of exile. They can go home again. I'm having trouble setting up a graph in experimental psychology. I was wondering, maybe you could give me a hand. Can you? I need your help. Are you speaking to me? The ban's been lifted. Terrific. The Jewish state isn't an issue anymore. It's a fact. No thanks to you and yours. My father is frightened that Jews again will be killed. This time by Arabs. I needed you. And you weren't there. I'm sorry. My father was very sick. And it would have been nice if you were around. Who is he? He's better. He's home. Why'd you do it? I had to. I chose to. Well, you may know how to live with silence. But I don't. I've lived with silence for a long time. You will learn how to live with it. You can hear the pain of the world in it. I don't understand that. 
I hate you and I hate your father for what you did. It's sadistic. You hate me? No, I don't hate you. I don't understand you. I'm... I'm, I'm glad that you're back. I've decided to leave Hush. You're not going to finish college? Yes, but I'm planning to transfer to Columbia University. Columbia has a great psychology department. Has your house blown up yet? No. What are you going to tell your father? Danny? Danny told me that Reb Saunders wants to see me. He invited me over on the second day of Passover. He wants to talk to me now, is he? He wants to talk to me. What, what does he want to say? Why now? You don't know why. He wants to talk to Danny. Through you. Look at the two of you now. Both of you. You're men. You're a man and my Daniel's a man. It's a, it's a pleasure for a father to see. Sit down. So now you'll tell me what are you going to do after your studies? I've been thinking of becoming a rabbi. So you're going to become a rabbi and uh, my Daniel will... My Daniel will go his own way. Ruvain, I'm going to tell you something. When my Daniel was four years old, I saw him, he read a book. He didn't read the book. He, he swallowed it. He swallowed it like one would swallow food, you know. And then he, uh, he came to me, and then he told me the story that was in the book. This story was about a man whose life was filled with, with suffering and with pain, and uh, but... Uh, That didn't, uh, it didn't move Daniel. You know, Daniel, Daniel was happy. He was happy because he realized for the first time in his life <laughs> what a memory he had. Master of the universe, I cried, what have you done to me? You give me a mind like this for a son. A heart I need for a son. A soul I need for a son. Compassion and mercy I need from my son. And above all, the strength to carry pain. That I need from my son. Now, how was I to do this? I mean, that was the question. How was I to, to teach him? How was I going to be able to do this to, to this son that I love and not lose the love of my son? When Danny was young, I used to hold him close. We used to laugh together, we used to play together, we used to whisper secrets to each other. We played. Then as he became older, and he became indifferent to people less brilliant than he thought he was, I saw what I had to do. I had to teach my Daniel 
that way. To the wisdom and the pain of silence, as my father did to me. I was forced to push him away from me. He became very frightened, he became bewildered, but slowly he began to understand that other people are alone in this world too. Other people are suffering, other people are, are carrying pain. And then, in this silence, we had between us Gradually, his self-pride, his feeling of superiority, his indifference began to, to fade away. And he learned through the wisdom and the pain of silence that a mind without a heart is nothing. So, you think that I've been cruel? Maybe Maybe, but but I don't I don't think so because my beloved Daniel has learned. So let him let him go. Let him become a psychologist. He said, "Why well, no? I know about that. Uh, I should know the books in the universities." Letters, so <laughs> become a psychologist already. But you see, now I am not afraid. I have no fear because my Daniel is a Zadik. He's a righteous man. And the world needs a righteous man. Daniel, you heard? Yes, Papa. And when you go forth into the world, you will be proud and go forth as a Jew. And you will keep the commandments of a Jew. It's good. It's good. Maybe you should forgive me for not being a wiser father.
believe it. Danny, I don't believe it. I, uh, that's, you look great. I came over to say goodbye. I'm moving out to uh, an apartment near Columbia University. Well, Columbia's not that far away. We could still see each other. How did your father react when he saw you like this? He said he almost didn't recognize me. He talked to you? We talk all the time now. king who had a son who had gone astray from his father. The son was told, return to your father, the son said. I cannot. Then his father sent a messenger to say, return as far as you can, and I will come to you the rest of the way. <laughs> 